Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for the Media Speaks. If you are looking at me over there, you are the high def. That's where you want to be. If I'm waving my hand in front of you here, that's low def, and that is for our live viewers. So if you're uh, looking at my nose, make sure you go to the video or look up the high def. It'll be posted as well. Friends, we're going to get straight into the news, and I am absolutely livid as I report here for the Media Speaks. Absolutely livid. Read the description. You'll get everything you need to know about race in the description for this video. Uh, in a nutshell, there are only two kinds of races that uh, me or this show will ever do anything uh, in terms of recognizing. That is the, uh, the human race. Do you mean black or white? No, there is the human race. The other thing that I will tolerate is the race that Paul the Apostle talks about. That is, we are all called to run the good race. Color is irrelevant. If you are a thug, like I said Michael Brown was, then unfortunately, you die like a thug dies. I have said that if, th if this man here, and I, I never dreamed it would happen, if this man here didn't get justice, who happens to be a black man, Eric Garner, then I would be the first one out there, the loudest, and I would protest arm in arm with anyone. Well, I'm making the promise on air. I'm making the promise for everyone to hear. I work Monday through Thursdays, and I work all night long. So it's very hard for me to do anything on those days. I also, I'm in Ohio, so it's not likely that I can join you in New York City uh, unless somebody uh, <laughs> foots the bell, the correct views at hotmail.com. You pay, and I will show up. Um, I would love to speak at any of these. If one is close, I will be going. Absolutely. 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 Eric Garner is not Michael Brown. I will not march for Michael Brown. I won't stop anyone who does. Not me. Eric Garner was killed by this cop. This cop needs to face justice. And literally, literally, he's getting away with murder here. I don't care what color Eric Garner was. Because he was of the human race. <clears throat> And somebody else of the human race killed him for no reason. Did you realize that, and this is the best article I've seen on this. <clears throat> I must have read like, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I must have read like 10 today, I swear to God. And this is the one I think that really stands out. I read a lot. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, December 3rd, 2014. Eric Garner killed by police for a tax evasion. He was selling cigarettes single, and he b was basically undercutting the tax system. For that, he died. Why wasn't I on Michael Brown's side? He just roughed up a clerk. They knew they were looking for someone that matched that description. The clerk, the owner, I should say. He charged the officer and got shot. This man was murdered by the police. Now, I ain't calling for rioting. No, I'm going out rioting. Sam said, yeah, let's riot. Hey, burn it down. You're an idiot. This man needs protests. This man needs stood up for it. And I guarantee you're going to find a whole lot more people of all races, because we are the human race, on this man's side than you did Michael Brown's. Because this man, regardless of the color of his skin, did not deserve to die. The grand jury decision not to indict an NYPD officer for choking Eric Garner to death is a shocking travesty of justice, I agree. But why were police harassing Garner in the first place? This is a, such a well-written article here by uh, PJ Dub, as we call him. The answer, he violated New York City's ridiculous cigarette tax laws. Eric Garner was summarily executed for avoiding taxes. Garner, it goes on, was tackled by several cops and put in an illegal chokehold by Officer Daniel Pantaleo during an incident when Staten Island earlier this summer. Video footage clearly shows that Garner was not resisting arrest 
and not acting aggressively towards officers. Pause. Why does that matter? Because they're saying that the chokehold that the officer used on Mr. Garner was something that they teach in the academy. That is something they teach in the academy for somebody who was resisting. That is something they teach you if you absolutely have to do it. I have a little bit of <clears throat> knowledge in this. I, I'm no great martial arts expert, but I took it long enough. Hat tip, victory, Asian arts, Master Blackwell is a wonderful person. Um, I took it enough to defend myself. I, I know I'm not like terrified to walk down the street. Um, there are moves that you do if you are fighting for your life. And there are moves you do if someone comes up to you fallen over drunk and grabs your hair. You don't take somebody's eyes out if they look like they can't stand up. Maybe an elbow to the nose, but you don't kill or otherwise forever blind the person. Would you go for the eyes if somebody was seven foot tall, perfectly sober, and charging at you with a knife? Yes, you would. You have to use some kind of restraint under certain situations. This man was not resisting. Therefore, under no law is it legal for a chokehold to be used. That is absolute fact. It goes on. <clears throat> the 43-year-old father of six begged for his life, telling officers that he couldn't breathe before dying moments later in what the medical examiner's office ruled as a homicide caused by a chokehold. So now we have a cop that is guilty of homicide. He killed the man. Are you mad? Because I am. Garner was choked to death for the crime of selling untaxed cigarettes, so-called Lucy's. His fatal encounter with the NYPD would not even have occurred if not for New York's punitively insane cigarette tax, which levies an additional state tax of $4.35 per pack, in addition to a further city tax of $1.50 per pack, driving an underground economy which accounts for over half of all cigarettes consumed in New York State. Now, for those of you that say, Sam, you said that Brown broke the law and got what he got. Maybe they weren't trying to kill this guy. They were just trying to restrain him, and he was breaking the law, and he got what he got. There are two answers to that. First of all, they shouldn't even be allowed to bring in a state law that forbids somebody from selling a perfectly legal product. You can argue that the taxes that are levied on it are absolutely illegal to begin with. Second of all, you cannot make a moral equivalency towards charging a police officer with selling cigarettes. Nobody hates cigarettes more than I do. I, my girl, Christelle, smokes like a chimney. But I don't think she should be killed if she sells a cigarette to somebody. And I can tell you one thing. We don't have that violence here in Ohio where some drive throughs do it. Um, people do it all the time where I live. I practically live in the hood. Um, they do it all the time. What happens when you overregulate? This happens when you overregulate. Why are we libertarian? This is why we are libertarian. It says Garner chose to participate in the booming underground cigarette market as a smuggler. Since 2009, he had been arrested eight times for selling Lucy's, which are popular among people who can't afford a full pack of cigarettes due to excess excessive taxes, writes Lawrence J. McQuillian, noting that the New York Police Department Chief Philip Banks issued an order on crackdown to crack down on vendors who smuggled cigarettes just days before Garner died. This is ridiculous. Absol For one thing, if they're his cigarettes, he should be allowed to do whatever he damn well pleases with them. When did we become, when did we become um, Russia? I don't understand this. In 2013, Mayor Bloomberg signed a bill which increased enforcement on vendors who attempt to evade taxes. So... It seems like the blood, are, blood is on many hands here. It says these events confirm that police are ultimately the enforcers now of the tax code. And every vote for higher taxes gives police increased authority to exert more force on citizens in more situations. Higher excise taxes inevitably lead to more violent clashes between police and smugglers, concludes McQuillian. The responsibility, it says, for Garner's death should not be shifted away from Officer Daniel Pentaleo, 
who clearly should have been put on trial for manslaughter. Amen. But the entire situation would have never arisen in the first place if not for New York's obsession with high taxes. And we know that any time you make anything illegal, then you make the underground rich. How do you think Al Capone became so popular? Do you think he was just born that way? The more they try to prohibit alcohol, the more Al Capone flourished. This is dailymail.co.uk. For those of you that are sick of the race stuff, scan ahead a couple minutes and I'll be off of it. But I want to go over all of it because I want to point out how if we do not unify as a people, we are screwed. And I'm going to point to a whole bunch of reasons why. Ferguson police shut down armed Oath Keeper vigilantes guarding rooftops of besieged town. Now, a lot of Oath Keepers are black men. I, I hate to be the one to tell you that, but they are. For those of you that don't know, the Oath Keepers are former military or police or like uh, professions who have taken an oath to uphold the law, but also to respect the rights of the people that put them in that position of power. Oath Keepers is that middle line. For more on that, go to Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me. They are in my um, documentary. It's free online. Go, go, go. Um, wonderful people are the Oath Keepers. Um, I have, there's a meme going around. Do you know that there were some real thug-looking black guys that took up arms legally to protect the business owner who happened to be white during the Ferguson riots. There are black people that get this just as much as I do. And I'm trying to be a force of change here. I hate thug culture. I hate radio hip hop. I think Drake is the most untalented son of a biscuit that ever lived. But you know what? None of that has anything to do with race. And I'm trying to get people here. Oh, I hate rap and thug culture. I don't care what color you are. No one likes a thug. But it has nothing to do with color. Look up Walter Williams. I would elect him for president. A mysterious militia group that appeared on rooftop patrols in Ferguson pledging to protect private property has been ordered to stand down. Oath Keepers, a vigilante organization, they are not vigilante, consisting of former and current military, police, and firefighters, abandoned their post on Saturday night after being threatened with arrest. Equipped with militia-style clothing and firearms, the Oath Keepers had been keeping free offering free security for businesses at risk of looting and arson in Ferguson. What, black owners, white owners, all owners? They took up positions on rooftops because they're heroes. They risk their lives. After the St. Louis suburb erupted in an orgy of violence and destruction, it says following the grand jury decision to not indict Darren Wilson, the white police officer who shot dead 18-year-old Michael Brown. It says, as tensions remained high in Ferguson over the weekend, St. Louis County police officers ordered the Oath Keepers to leave the rooftops so that the buildings they were protecting could be burnt to the ground, potentially, threatening them with arrest for operating without a license. So don't tell me there are not still police officers. Even though I was on Wilson's side, these officers are messed up. They are messed up. It is utter BS. Uh, Oath Keepers, here's a free idea from the correct views. Next time this happens, go inside the store, if they allow you, of course, with the key, and just sit there with a gun. You leased it that night. It's legal. The gun is legal. There you go. Now you can keep track of the store without being on the rooftops, courtesy of the correct views. Hose the building down first. Uh, prevents Molotov cocktails from catching as quickly uh, more than a dozen local businesses were razed to the ground last Monday, while many more were looted in a night of arson, random gunfire, and pitched battles. With heavily armed riot police unable to cope with the scale of the mayhem. So you get heroes that show up after the National Guard is told to stand down and they're told to leave. Utter nonsense. Last thing we're going to get to on this, because I know many of you are interested in this, and I know many of you are tired of it. Well, we cover everything on this show. Welcome to The Correct Views. Uh, Infowars.com. Black officer shoots and kills a white unarmed man. Again, this isn't race. This is actually live leak. Um, it's posted on Infowars, but it's uh, sourced as live leak. 
Unarmed a white man killed by black cop, and here's how the media reacted. While national news media, and this was November 27th, it continued to focus on race in Ferguson, Missouri, where a white police officer shot and killed an unarmed black teenager, they apparently don't think a similar case in Utah with the races reversed is even newsworthy. Police in Salt Lake City are continuing their probe into an August 11th shooting outside a 7-Eleven convenience store when a black police officer, whom local media are referring to as not white, shot and killed 20-year-old Dylan Taylor, who was unarmed at the time, according to police. Police officer Chris Barbank, uh, nip, there it goes, I scrolled it down too far because I'm an idiot, Police Chief Chris Barbank said that the entire incident was captured on the body camera of the officer who shot Taylor. You will see on camera the actions of everyone involved, including up to the point where our officer utilizes deadly force and his response thereafter, Burbank told reporters. He goes on to say that the video along with the officer's identity would be released at an appropriate time, adding it could be days, weeks, or months. It looks like this guy probably had it coming to him, too, and he's white, so maybe I hate my own race. My point is we are looking at a morality issue. We are looking at issues as well that are dividing us, okay? And they are using this to further take our rights away. Because thugs do bad things with guns, regular black people won't be allowed to have guns. Because Satanists do things with guns, certain white people won't be allowed to have guns anymore. And if you can keep the black and white people fighting while you do this, well, you can bring in all kinds of BS, can't you? That's all I have to say on it, people. Guys, at DailyMail.co.uk, a drone's eye view of Chernobyl eerie footage reveals a city left to decay after devastating nuclear disaster. If you don't know this, uh, the show will not be laying off the Fukushima mess because it continues to hurt you and your family every single day of your life. And um, I want to go over just a little bit of what, what nuclear anything brings, brings to a people. Let's go over it. We just had a, I haven't even got to it yet. 4.47 in the morning, 12, 4, 2014. There's been nuclear problems now in the Ukraine. Where there is nuclear, there is disaster. And when there is a huge disaster, this happens. It says a frozen Ferris wheel poisoned forests and plants sloughing, sloughing off an empty swimming pool. These are the remains of a city devastated by a nuclear disaster nearly 30 years ago. Pripyat in Ukraine, once home to a population of 50,000 people, was just a few miles from the Chernobyl plant, which exploded in 1986. So now you have today, 2014, another uh, nuclear mess of some kind, I don't know how big yet, going on there. And you have this having already happened there. Look up uh, Belarus and some of the horrible deformities that we're seeing here. And don't forget, this all gets brought to the dread stream to the United States for those of you that are zoning out. Now a Devon-based documentary maker, Danny Cook, C-O-O-K-E, has captured the area in decay by flying around the abandoned area using a camera attached to a drone. The footage shows Pripyat being taken over by nature. Eerie views of rusted bumper cars and scattered papers are placed alongside golden flowers and trees growing among buildings. I'm a huge, huge, huge amusement park fan. This was an amusement park, a thriving community. Now it's a an abandoned radioactive wasteland due to nuclear power. It says the footage shows Pripyat being taken over by nature. You can see it. It says uh, this footage is the first to provide the drone's view. It says Chernobyl is one of the most interesting and dangerous places I've been, Mr. Cook wrote. The nuclear disaster, which happened in 86, had an effect on so many people, including my family when we lived in Italy. It was a year after he was born. How do you get to do all this at such a young age? I just don't get it. I digress. It says, I can't imagine how terrifying it would have been for hundreds of thousands of locals who evacuated. Think about it. You're living in this place with this little amusement park and the power plant hires most of the people here and it's just a normal city. You don't have to be Russian to relate to this. One day, bam, a nuclear disaster happens. You're rushed out of the city and you've inhaled enough toxins that you died of cancer and your kids came out deformed. 
It says scientists are deeply divided on how many have died as a result of the explosion. Look up Chris Busby Chernobyl. He's got it pretty well figured out. But it released about 400 times more radiation than the U.S. atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. That's, it was worse by 400 times. It said Pripyat is now believed to be safe for a visit of short periods as isotopes released during the disaster have decayed. Well, it'll look up uh, uranium and plutonium. They take millions of years to decay, so don't buy it. It said the accident occurred, of course, during a systems test on April 26th of 1986. And we know this. My point is, look up Mr. Cook's work and see what nuclear does. See what nuclear brings and ask if you really want to be a part of it or not. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. And do me a favor, please. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find his work at Facebook.com. How many times are writers just ignored these days? Well, if you're watching this show, you're probably a reader. Do me a favor. Look up his work. He writes amazing, amazing short stories, and he's selling them on his Facebook page. So go to Mike McLaughlin and uh, let him know you heard about it from the correct views. Do the same thing at the Arcadia Grill, who is bringing, our, bringing you our next story about Mars. Um, go to the Arcadia Grill in Canton. Tell them that you heard about it from Sam with the correct views, that you absolutely love their food, which is not going to be a lie, because when you eat it, you're going to be hooked. They're on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. Friends, AmericanLiveWire.com. NASA prepares six-member team for Mars mission in Hawaii. This goes out to my friend Dana. Um, those of you that may not know, I do run the uh, News from the Science Front. It is a section in the Saturday edition of the Media Speaks that goes live at 2 p.m. every Saturday at Eastern Standard Time. News from the Science Front. I cover all of the things that are happening. Uh, well, not all the things, but many of the things happening in the science field today. And I like to pepper that throughout my news stories here. I'm going to do one before we move on to other news. And this is really interesting. It says, as a first step towards a manned mission to Mars by 2030, NASA prepared a six-member team for an eight-month stay in a dome-shaped building on a Hawaiian volcano. So this is a great way to test it. The project known as High Seas Hawaiian Sea Exploration Analog and Simulation is part of a study backed by NASA to check the precincts of sustainable living on a Hawaiian volcano. And this is important because there are some groups that are signing people up to never come back from Mars. While that is cheaper, you do not always get the best and brightest doing that. I think for those that want to do it, they should be allowed to do it you're going to get the best and brightest of the people that absolutely are dedicated to uh, an obsessive degree or that really hate Earth. But to bring more people in, you're going to have to find ways to bring people back and forth. People will give up five years, maybe even ten years of their life. People do not want to live on Mars for the rest of their life. So these kinds of things might bring more of the intelligent but normal, if I may, whatever that word means, but you get my point. The more normal people into it, it says the project is designed to check how well people who are secluded can coordinate to work together coherently and find out their requirements to survive on the red planet. Right now, the psychological risks are still completely, not completely, excuse me, understood and not completely corrected for, said chief investigator for the project, Kimberly Binstead, information and computer science professor from the Uni of Cali in uh, the Uni of Hawaii at Manoa. Manoa is beautiful. NASA is not going to go until we solve this. How do you select and support astronauts for a mission that will last two to three years in a way that will keep them healthy and performing well? Binstead posted the question. An estimate projects that, that on their way to Mars, the astronauts will invest at least six months to reach the planet and another six months to return back home. This totals 12 months of their lives, traveling as well as 500 days on Mars. So, the team stepped into the 36-foot dome-shaped building on Mauna Loa Volcano, the second largest volcano in the solar system, last Wednesday, October the 15th. 
It's a very pared down existence in space. You can only use the energy from the sun, the water that you bring with you, and the food that you grow. Martha Linio, the leader of the group and a renewable energy entrepreneur, said, On Earth, it is so large and forgiving, we forget that we have to live within our limits. And that's where I see the crossover between space and applications on Earth. If we can live like this in our space station, it might be easier to do it on Earth. The finalists for the project, it said, were picked after a six-day camping trip in the Rocky Mountains that showcased their survivalist skills and teamwork. It finishes here. Other crew members include Alan Mercadovov, 35, and NASA aerospace engineer Jocelyn Dunn, 27, a Purdue University student. And it goes on to list many, many more. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But friends, it looks like, well, let's face it. How much could we actually do if we weren't dealing with things like ISIS and nuclear BS? What could we actually accomplish? accomplish and i like to do those stories because it reminds us of that all right guys at dishwashers.review.com this is funny uh goodbye granite i'm gonna go i know what i'm gonna skip that it's tempting but no it's not that tempting all right guys prisonplanet.com it's this Watch your countertops. They're putting things in it that can uh, be full of BPA and it's bad for you. Uh, mainstream media finally admits to massive gold manipulation. This is interesting. I've been telling everybody that'll listen, buy gold. You can buy it by money order. Bring it to your house. Write out a receipt that it was sold and you no longer own it. Gold is being held down and every everyone knows it. Let's be real. Everyone knows it. It's going to fly through the roof. This is more news on that. And you notice I don't have a gold sponsor. Mike McLaughlin and the Arcadia Grill are my two wonderful sponsors. I'm not invested in gold. I'm not getting paid to tell you this. Buy gold, bonehead. For most gold investors, the manipulation of the price of precious metals has been blatant and obvious. Almost anyone who buys physical gold and silver believes that the big banks and governments have a vested interest in keeping gold prices down to support their fiat currencies. That is to say, paper money created out of thin air and then taxed. It said, uh, the market is rigged with massive amounts of paper gold. Never buy paper gold. If you don't know what it is, you're better off not knowing. If you do know what it is, don't buy it. If there was no funny business going on, then there would be no reason to buy physical gold. Doing so is basically a middle finger to the banks and can be your way of telling the manipulators that you aren't playing their game. Amen! If anything, this market rigging has been solely responsible for the growth of the gold movement. And make no mistake, it is a political movement just as much as it is a financial movement. Amen! With the price of gold being kept artificially low, everyone knows about this manipulation, also knows that they are getting a great deal when they buy precious metals. That is now, before everybody wakes up at the same time and the lie can't go on anymore and gold prices go through the roof. It says you know what they know what it's really worth and they realize that in the long term the manipulation cannot last forever. Unfortunately, or fortunately for you that have already bought gold, the mainstream media has done nothing to inform the public of these shenanigans. They have long derided gold investors, calling them conspiracy theorists and claiming that gold is nothing more than a bubble. A bubble? It's, it's, so, it's so artificially low right now that they're mining it almost for the price they're selling it for. And you can get small bits of gold... Um, Again, I'm going to give you a site, but I am not getting paid by these people. Feel free to go to another site, J.R. Bullion. Don't like them? Good. Don't go there. I'm just saying you can look up the gold prices there. You can get gold as little as $40 at most, $43, I think, at any gold site. Look at it, people. Last paragraph on this. It says, it appears that the media is finally coming around to the idea that these markets are rigged. For reasons, and the author says that I can only speculate. I can't fathom why their corporate handers would allow these talking heads to fess up to the true nature of precious metals. Perhaps after buying at artificially low prices for so long, they are going to make a windfall by hyping up the manipulation. Think about it. If they were in their 20s or 40s when they were working to keep the price down, then they are now what? approaching uh, retirement age or older. Now they want it to go back up so they can enjoy this money before they die. 
that means if they're admitting it now, it's very likely that it's about to go through the roof. So buy a little bit. Take a look at CN CNBC, and it's uh, it's on there. Clearly, it's on there. All right, friends, two more stories I want to get to. All of you know I do the dunce cap of the month where I mail a dunce cap. I've mailed them to the FBI. I've mailed them to the CIA. I have mailed them to the Department of Energy. I have mailed them to police stations. They get a certificate telling them that they're an idiot and why they won the dunce cap of the month award, and they get a real dunce cap. Uh, well, I'm going to have one handy. Well, we're still working on that show, so it is going to be a tad behind. For those of you that love it, here is two dumdies. We're going to end the show with two dumdies today. These are stories that were not quite dumb enough to make the dunce cap of the month show, but are, however, way too dumb to be skipped. And this is from Zero Hedge, dated November 13th, but I could not let this go. These might be the stupidest people in America iPhones are for amateurs at the time that this was written, keep in mind. With 22 days to go, the Black Friday line has started. Having apparently missed the note about Walmart sp spreading its Black Friday love across five days, these two intrepid shoppers, intrepid, have decided, another word, dumdy, have decided that whatever it is that is inside this Beaumont, California Best Buy is worth 22 nights of sleeping under the stars on a warm pavement. This is from uh, Beaumont Patch. Vicky Torres of Cabazon and Juanita Salas of Beaumont arrived at Best Buy in Beaumont on Wednesday, 22 days before deals began for the infamous shopping day on Thanksgiving night. What a bunch of idiots. We could have settled, started later, but then we wouldn't be sure to be the first in line, Taurus told Patch on, Sun, on Friday. Yeah, because you couldn't wait until one person got in line and at least started it then, even if you're dumb enough to do it. 